now we're going to talk about looks like we're talking about UFOs what's that guys remember back in the 70s or was it the 80s these things were popping up all over the place and supposedly a UFO landed there and caused a crop circle so we're talking about crop circles no we're not talking about crop circles we're talking about alopecia errata so did a, did a little UFO land on this poor guy's head and cause these crop circles? No, I don't think so. Uh, so let's let's see what's really going on here. Uh, so it is, alopecia is the sudden development of circle-like lesions of hair loss on the scalp and face. They're typically not painful. Uh, so that is good. They tend to strike children and young adults, 25 and under, so my students' age pretty much are targets of these. That's when they first show up. You can have these for the rest of your life, though. The lesions are smooth to touch, so there's no, uh, there's no rash there or anything like that. Lifetime prevalence is about 2%. Makes up about 2% of the population in dermatology clinics, so it is a fairly common problem. Uh, there is no dermal inflammation involved here. If you look at this crop circle or this alopecia lesion, alopetic lesion, uh, there's no redness or anything like that. The, the inflammation is deeper uh, inside, and we'll see that in a second. Uh, one of the things we can tell while we're looking at this picture, see these short little stubby hairs? Those are called exclamation point hair. And that's one of the key findings, uh, and that by itself can make the diagnosis of alopecia if you see those in there. Okay, uh, not dangerous condition, but psychosocial issues. I mean, going to school, things like that can be devastating, right, for young people. Clinical presentation, you get the circle lesions we just looked at, but that's not the only presentation. Sometimes there's a complete loss of hair, as we'll see. It doesn't always happen. It's more rare, uh, but you can lose all the hair over your, uh, your, your head, your eyebrows, and your eyelashes. Or another presentation is where the hair just thins. What about the common question, if you get one of these, will it come back? About 60 to 67 or two-thirds of cases, the hair will, the lesion will regrow with hair within a year. But before you get too excited, most likely it's going to happen again, maybe in the same spot, maybe in other spots. Kind of once you're in the club, you tend to be in the club. Not not all the time though some people uh, we have a family member who had one of these things and it was gone and it uh, it's been years and years and it's never come back yet maybe when she's older uh, who knows but usually once you're in the club you're in the club 33 percent the other third of people they get one crop circle one one allopatic lesion and that's it it never grows back uh, some evidence says that getting a delayed treatment uh, will decrease the chance of the hair coming back, so it's good to get into the dermatologist right away, especially if one of these is big. Uh, sometimes when the hair grows back, it grows back as a white, as white hair, which is quite strange. Here's that, what was his name, Pescorius or whatever, that disgraced athlete. Uh, the stress of his trial, I guess, caused these things to pop out. Uh, then there's the atypical presentations of alopecia errata. Uh, there can be a diffuse hair loss pattern, which looks just like uh, that male pattern baldness, which is so common in guys because of DHT. Uh, so that one of the differentiations is male pattern baldness. What's the official word for male powder, pattern baldness? It's androgenic alopecia because uh, DHT is too much DHT around or too many DHT receptors are around in the follicles and we won't talk about that baldness today. Um, so that's a diffuse pattern of alopecia. Also you got to rule out Cushing's disease uh, in these patients. Uh, there could be an overproduction of uh, DHEA, DHEA and DHEA although in itself it's not uh, a testosterone or anything, it can be converted into testosterone, which can be converted into DHT. Uh, so people, that's got to be, that's a strong differential diagnosis. Just a little anatomy of the hair. So there's a hair, the hole right here, the opening is called the pore. The hole uh, that the hair grows in is called the follicle. So this whole thing is the follicle. 
uh, and down here is the bulb which is the star of the show in alopecia this is what gets inflamed in people with alopecia not the follicle not the surface uh, so let's talk about that so some lab results the hair people with alopecia they do a biopsy of the scalp and you'll find inflammation uh, within the hair bulb typically does not affect the outer portion here the follicle which is good but if you get an inflammation of the bulb it causes the hair to fall out uh, and the inflammation does not typically destroy the follicle so it has the potential to grow back uh, and that, like we said about 67 percent of people it will grow back uh, the exclamation point hair sometimes it grows back but that's all the higher it grows it just grows into an exclamation point and doesn't grow all the way out and then that little thing falls off uh, so typically in a patient uh, with alopecia you do some blood work their DHE levels the cortisol and their aldosterone levels these are all the hormones secreted by the adrenal cortex right they'll all be level they'll all be normal Okay, there's a guy who's got it pretty bad, right? And it doesn't it doesn't just affect the hair. See, plenty of students wa uh, walking around over the years with these big holes in their beard. Though that's alopecia errata, whether it be on their scalp or not. So sometimes it affects their beard. Sometimes it affects their head and beard. Uh, sometimes it affects people's eyelashes and eyebrows as well. So it can affect any type of hair. Uh, here's a girl who has alopecia and it's affected the hair of her eyelashes gone right here and her eyebrow is pr almost completely gone as well uh, the ideology we know it's not ufos right the ide ideology is really not completely understood but the number one theory you guessed it the autoimmune type of theory uh, there's something some some of the proteins in the hairball or some of the genes that make those proteins in the hair bulb they get flicked on by something is it cigarette smoke is it pollution is the air who knows what it is but all of the sudden the body's immune system looks at these hair bulb cells and says I don't recognize you anymore that's because they got some different genes turned on or making some new gene products and it goes you're evil we must attack and it attacks the hair bulb and the hair falls out that's the number one theory uh, what's the proof of this theory if histological analysis you'll see T lymphocyte infiltration uh, only on the hair bulb so that suggests an anti hair bulb and uh, autoimmune sparked inflammation which spared the hot, spared the follicle some other associated conditions thyroid abnormalities if your patient has these uh, you should test them for uh, get the thyroid study done blood work done to make sure everything's okay Hashimoto's disease uh, so get T3 T4 uh, TSH levels checked to make sure their thyroid's okay pernicious anemia has been associated with this condition as well another autoimmune condition uh, for the most part Addison's disease right that's the number one type of primary adrenal insufficiency get an autoimmune destruction of the adrenal gland specifically 21 hydroxylase gene gets hit by an autoimmune attack and you lose your ability to make DHEA or no uh, to make cortisol and aldosterone uh, but you can still make DHEA uh, with the most common type of Addison's disease and I know what you're saying oh no I thought I was done with that endocrinology it's back at least this is back I do like my endocrinology okay some other associated conditions diabetes mellitus should be checked that's autoimmune some theories anyway uh, systemic lupus erythematosus check the ana for that check blood sugar levels for diabetes syphilis probably not so much in our country but uh, syphilis can also do that order rapid plasma uh, regain test for that one some associations we already said family and genetics about a 20 percent uh, relationship between those mom and dad have it you got a decent chance 20 percent chance you'll get it anyway uh, stress used to be cited as a cause of alopecia very very little evidence that stress has anything to do with this so that's probably another like the white socks that's probably another hoax uh, there are some drugs that are notorious for calling causing alopecia in fact a very uh, a popular 
anti-tumor necrosis factor alpha inhibitor called Intanercep or Emberol or Infliximab. Um, all of these is the same same type of drug, a very powerful anti-inflammatory for treatment of Crohn's, ulcerative colitis, ankylosing spondylitis, rheumatoid arthritis, psoriatic arthritis, all the wicked inflammation, uh, inflammatory arthritis. Um, one of the side effects is it causes crop circles or alopatic lesions. Uh, there are two other types. Uh, they're not quite as common. There's alopecia totalis and alopecia universalis. I don't know why one star is there. There should be like a million stars here. I do like these. Uh, so 20% of the time, uh, the alopecia, your run-of-the-mill alopecia can get really, really bad. I gotta check that. It's Williams, 20%. It's a good source, but it seems high to me. But anyway, let's look at it. Alopecia totalis, totalis is you get all your hair is lost. And it may not look exactly like this. Maybe it'll be a little patch here and there. But for the most part, all of your hair is gone. But your eyelashes and your eyebrows are spared. Or are the eyebrows? Actually, the eyelashes are spared. I think her eyebrows are actually painted on here. Because um, normally it takes your all your hair off your head, your eyebrows, but your eyelashes are spared with this one. Uh, so this one affects young children and adults alike. Then this one is rare. There's that. We're just watching that movie. What is that called? Uh, Barry. I think it's called Barry. It's kind of a semi-comedy about a hit man who's trying to become an actor. It's a pretty good movie. But one of the characters in there has alopecia areata universalis. He looks just like this. He's got no eyelashes, no eyebrows, and no hair on his head. And that's called alopecia areata universalis. I should have put the Barry guys. I can't remember his name, but anyway. Um, so what about treatment options? There are uh, cortical steroids which you can use. You can rub on topical cortical steroids. Really not very effective. The king of the treatment for these things to kind of uh, to kind of knock out the the autoimmune type attack. A strong anti-inflammatory called Kenalog. Um, some people use this as epidural steroid injections. Depomedrol is probably better, but it's got that scare. I had that scare a while back. I'll try to stay on point. I've been good about staying on point. So, Kenalog injections are the king uh, for sure. Very powerful anti inflammatory. Um, this is the best treatment. There are some side effects. It can cause some skin atrophy at the ejection site. Better see what time it is. Oh, gosh, I got to go. Um, and yeah, so there's uh, that's one problem with that, but that's the king. You can try a contact dermatitis to try to stimulate an anti-inflammatory-like effect. They're kind of hit or miss. They don't seem to work that good. At least there's no skin atrophy with that. Puva therapy, hit or miss. Uh, we've talked about that before. Take a sorolin and then expose to ultraviolet light. And then ultimately, it's a hair prosthesis. Uh, we can't go wrong with that. That won't cause any trouble. Prognosis, a good prognosis means uh, that you get it when you are an adult is the first onset, uh, and it's a small little circle. Uh, that means it probably won't go on to be universalis or anything like that. Poor prognosis is if you get one early on in childhood and it's a big one, that does not bode well for the future anyway. Uh, typically only about less than 10% will regrow hair if it happens that uh, early. you probably end up getting uh, either sh shaving your head or getting a toupee or wig. Okay, hope you enjoyed it. We will see you next week in dermatology class.